belief in photography is that it's about engaging with people. And he had a way of being able to do that that was remarkable. The reality of war isn't that you might get killed out there. The core truth about war is that you're guaranteed to lose your brothers. A new documentary is set to air this week on HBO about the life of the late of war photojournalist Tim Hetherington. It's directed by his close friend Sebastian Younger. He is the author of The Perfect Storm and War. And uh, the film reveals some harrowing footage shot of Hetherington as he worked as well as some lighter moments. We've got Sebastian with us right here. Thank you so much for being here. Appreciate that. My pleasure. Uh, you were actually in Boston yesterday. You were telling me uh, about to air this film and at, we're at the JFK Library. <laughs> Yeah, I was right down the street on Commonwealth Ave uh, when the explosion went off and we were going to screen the film at JFK Library and we had to cancel. You had to cancel this. Uh, you yourself are no, um, you're very familiar with the, the acts of war and obviously you were very close with Tim. You've made this story about his life. Uh, tricky narrative art to bring to life on film using the still photographs. Tell us how you came, uh, arrived at, at the way you told it and why you decided to make the film at all. I, I learned a huge amount from Tim. We were in a lot of combat together. He was 10 years younger than me, and I really l learned from him about how to be a person in the world and how to be a journalist. I wanted other people to be able to learn from him, and he's no longer, longer around to do that. So I wanted to make a film that put his incredible work on display. He and I co-edited, I co-directed uh, Restrepo together. Right. We were at this remote outpost off and on for a year. And, um, you know, I, it, you can't fit a man's life into 80 minutes, but you can maybe put in the th things that that person found most significant, most meaningful in his own life. That's what I tried to do with this film. When you and Tim were in the field, particularly when you were filming Restrepo, what was the most harrowing moment that the two of you experienced together? Oh, we got pinned down once. We got hit pretty hard on this hillside. And uh, the, the, I, I, I was shooting video then, and, and, and uh, we took turns shooting video, basically. And so I have, there's a shot of it in the film. We were trying to take cover behind trees the size, thickness of beer cans. And I remember watching leaves drift down onto Tim that were getting cut by bullets over his, his head. And that was a very bad moment. And all the while this is happening, you all are both obviously trying to document what you're going through as, as best you can while protecting yourselves. You know, one thing I was struck by in watching uh, your new film, Which Way is the Front Line from Here, The Life and Times of, of Tim Hetherington, was you focused on the type of camera he used, right? This was not a camera in front of his face. It was a camera he looked down in. Tell us a little bit about that and why you think that helped Tim connect with the people that he was shooting. Yeah, he had a, a large format camera that he looked down into the viewfinder. And so what he could do is... is take your photograph from here while looking you directly in the eye and having conversation. And so people really opened up and you can see in the photos that these are not people who are passive participants and just getting their photo taken. There's actually a relationship even for 30 seconds between Tim and the subject and it makes all the difference. And you have to make those relationships under the most difficult circumstances when you're out there on the front lines uh, and often very quickly uh, and it's difficult for reporters. You are starting to teach reporters. You started a, not a new not-for-profit um, called Risk Reporters Instructed in Saving Colleagues. You started this after Tim's death. What kind of skills are you hoping or, or are you teaching reporters who are out there going to be out there in the field? Well, t you know, Frankly, Tim died in a situation very similar to Boston yesterday. A large explosion from a mortar uh, fired by Qaddafi's forces in the city of Misrata. Uh, people lost their lim limbs and, and uh, several Libyans were killed as well as a wonderful photographer named Chris Hondros mm. and Tim, my friend Tim Hetherington who bled out in the back of a pickup truck and no one around him knew what to do. He, he didn't necessarily have a mortal wound. He just died of loss of blood. No journalists that I know have any medical training right. I wanted to start a nonprofit that taught medical skills. And how many people have come through there so far? We train 24 at a time. We've done three sessions. Uh, it's in New York City. It's a four day course. Everything's free the hotel, the training, and the medical kit. It's all free, but we depend on donations. We take people in from the front lines. We train them and we send them back out to do their work. I'm curious, you talk about, or you've talked about in the past, the unique experience of, of, of male camaraderie that war provides. And I wonder. Uh, if you think that you and Tim, had you not been in on the front lines together, had you not filmed Restrepo and been in Afghanistan, would you just in normal circumstances, two, two guys, two men, would you have been as close of friends or did that provide the backdrop of your relationship? That's a good question. I don't think we necessarily would have. I mean, there was one of the guys in the platoon said to me at one point, he said, 
He said, there are guys in the platoon who straight up hate each other, but we'd all die for each other. Yeah. And um, Tim and I, our friendship, I mean, we had our problems, we had our issues, we argued, you know? Right. I mean, we were, we're both complicated Strong people. Strong guys, yeah. We, yeah. But we really loved each other, and that came from um, not because we were friends in New York City. It right. came because we were in combat off and on for a year and very much needed each other when we were out there. And this is in many ways a love story, it feels like to me, at least having watched it from one friend to another. Yeah. Uh, and uh, thank you for being here. The name of the film is Which Way is the Frontline from Here, The Life and Times of Tim Hetherington. Sebastian Younger, thanks so much for being with us. Thank you, my pleasure. Appreciate that. Okay.